we exchange certain dialogues that provoke us, that stimulate us. Similarly, when we were brainstorming for uh, bringing out few business communication topics related to CFT project, we also exchanged a series of dialogues that stimulated us to think broader, to think clearer. And this is what we call banter is. This is what banter is. And this is how we thought uh, if the boardroom, the boardroom discussions, the meetings are also having banter. And hence, the topic, uh, boardroom banter. A very warm good morning to one all, uh, to everyone present here. We have Apurva, Mitlesh, Swapnil, and myself, Sashmita, who are going to uh, take you through the boardroom banters, uh, examining the conversation flow, challenges, and team, dy team dynamics uh, outcomes during a banter. So this is our uh, outline. Talking about the methodology, uh, so we have adopted broadly two kinds of data collection uh, processes. Primarily, we conducted semi-structured interviews and analyzed them for 14 industry leaders who are directors and CEOs in various companies. Uh, we also extended a communication satisfaction survey to those interviewees, those 14 people. Uh, we also uh, structured a small a mini survey that we uh, circulated with the help of Google Forms uh, to our uh, peers, to the BL people who have already passed out, to prospects of industries who are in middle management who are aspiring to become CEOs someday, uh, to collect their views. And secondarily, we uh, researched, we analyzed some published uh, papers which are, we analyzed basically three papers. So let's get started on the topic. So in the uh, secondary research, in the primary research that we circulated among the prospects, uh, we tried to understand what is the general understanding of Benta. And here, as you can see, most of the people opted for humor, tease, uh, sarcasm, argument. And when we tried to, pro, uh, like, to prompt some certain definitions that we took from the research papers that we analyzed, 58% of the people said that banter is to speak or address uh, in a witty and teasing manner. And 35% of the people said banter is exaggeration, irony, sarcasm, comedy, and humiliation. Naturally, our instinct was to turn to the leaders to understand what practically banter is in boardrooms. And let us, banter is, and let us hear from the leader himself. I think, you know, like I said, casual conversations between a few members on the side before, after, during the meeting, uh, you know, to discuss things uh, informally is what I would, I thought it was. And most of the CEOs and directors agreed that banter is informal conversation, banter is constructive sarcasm. Now, uh, the literature also defines banter as friendly remarks and jokes. Uh, one of the literature also said that it is an offensive way of being friendly, establishing or maintaining a bond of uh, familiarity. Now, we wanted to understand what is the general definition of boardroom banter is among the prospects. And most of the people said that boardroom banter is discussion, humor, criticism, and sarcasm. The leader said, that mostly it is good thinking and humor. It is casual conversation that happens before, during, and after the meetings. Though we didn't get a definition of boardroom banter in any of the literatures, so here we present the definition of banter at workplace, which is uh, intrinsic human behavior. It is multifunctional, facilitating social interactions, building rapport, and tackling complex and challenging topics of a conversation. With this, I invite uh, Mithilesh to take us through the analysis. Am I audible? So thank you, Sashmita, for uh, providing me the, I think, the least engaging subject matter. But don't worry. We are going to make it more interesting as possible. Thank you. So moving forward. As we can see over here, uh, that we already got to know what exactly the banter means. Now, moving, uh, like by seeing into the various kind of uh, research papers, by various questionnaires, 
Unfortunately, we couldn't find something which could be more related to the boardroom banters. But fortunately, it has given us a wonderful task to look out into various kind of industry, meeting with the various kind of leaders, and got to know what we can look out into and how it can be helpful for all of us. So as you can see over here, a very nice survey questionnaire given by the Down and Hazens, and they have uh, given us a set of a questions of around 41. And out of that, we have selected the 10 vital questions which we thought could be probably be affected by the boardroom banters. So what these questions has been talked about? So they are talking about the satisfaction levels um, among the various aspects of the communication in an organization. And these ratings has been taken from a zero till 10, whereas the five is the mid satisfaction level, zero is the no satisfaction level, and 10 is the, the highest satisfaction level. And as you can see over here, uh, the ratings, especially the mean, is coming around uh, mostly between five till nine. Let's take a one of the example. What communication practices are adaptable to emergencies? If you can see over here, it's mostly falling into uh, towards the highest satisfaction level. And if you see, most of them has been even falling into within this range. So this shows that, yes, there is some kind of definitely relation between this kind of a communication and what exactly we are trying to look out. So that's not all. We have even asked to many of the uh, leaders who are our interviews from various industries. And uh, we try to bridge out how exactly this boardroom banters is really helpful for us to, to, uh, to optimize this kind of communication, uh, uh, communication kind of points which we have gathered into. So let's go, get into the, one of the questions that how effective, especially the rate of effectiveness of this humorous kind of banters in, in kind of a challenging situations. As you can see, towards my side, it's like very highly effective, they have talked about. And on the other side, it is moderately effective. So most of them have talked that how it really helps them a lot in their communication, in, the, in their day-to-day -day activities. As in the Bhagavad Gita, it has been said that yad yad acharati sreshtas tat tat eve taroha janaha. The sreshtas means the people, those who are the leaders, and the jana means all the followers. We have to really follow what exactly we can get from them. And the same question talks about here that does boardroom really need a banter? Yes. It, it really helps to as an icebreaker. It really helps to uh, talk about the about a personality. And yes, it is even facilitates uh, to, to talk about your opinion. So we can see over here that how exactly even many more examples that how it is really striking a balance as between the professionalism as well as a lighthearted communication. So moving forward, I just wanted to know some of the few topic, a few points, because we all are as a future leaders, that how banters you are going to utilize in your uh, in, in your day-to-day -day activities like just just one or two uh, some examples why exactly do you welcome banter come on anyone like why why generally you will be having such kind of humor in your discussion especially in any kind of a boardroom meetings sorry okay insights To lighten up the mood, yes, very nice. To make others comfortable, very nice. So let's hear from uh, a very respected uh, personality who is having the 25 years plus experience. Uh, what what's he actually talks about? Why exactly we used to have to welcome the banters? It was uh, on the physical level, you used to do the conduct with such a kind of meeting. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, nowadays, uh, the term has been changed, am I right? Uh, so it's a, it becomes a banter, uh, which is a very good concept. So yeah. um, I feel I feel that banters are needed. It's a need of the hour, especially yeah, yeah. at this time when there are a lot of competitions, there are a lot of tensions are there, and yeah. and uh, you. Uh, as a being a leader, I was the principal of Dune School. So yeah. uh, as being a leader, it's my duty to carry forward my colleagues, my uh, those who teachers who are beside me uh, in, a, in a very uh, light manner so that Correct. they can do something uh, fruitful, you know. Correct. So, Correct. in my point of view, mentors are needed. 
Yeah, so we can see over here that how much it resonates that your point of view that as you have talked about the lightheartedness, the insights and all with the point of view our the leaders, those who have been having many great of years of experience in their field and on top of that what we have got uh, from the various even other leaders that circumstantial it helps in the diffusing the tension it can be used as a nudging tool and many more such uh, uh, finding outs that we have got into so moving forward into our analysis i would like to take the privilege to call our data analysis expert master swapnil Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you, Mitlesh. So uh, so we uh, asked some more questions regarding boardroom banters. And one of those questions were this. In the context of boardroom discussions, how frequently does a friendly banter or wordplay occur among participants? Almost every one of them agreed that there is some sort of banters exist even in boardrooms. And, uh, but to a, a, a different uh, it, uh, you know, uh, degrees. Uh, so 80% of them felt it's, it happens very occasionally, while 20% of them felt it happens very frequently. Now, our main intention was to understand if banters can be helpful uh, for a, uh, overall communication uh, for the organization. So what we try to do, we try to map those questions of communication uh, with these questions. So, so one of the questions that, uh, that Mithle showed earlier was uh, the communication satisfaction, uh, communication satisfaction uh, survey. So in which one of these questions was informal communication is active and accurate, where the mean was 7.43. So mean of all the respondents. Then we tried to find out the mean of the people, those 20% people who said where banter happened more frequent, very frequently. There the mean comes out to be even greater 8.33. So on a scale of 0 to 10, where people believe that where banter is happening more frequently, they are rating higher this question. Right. Uh, one more interesting observation we had. Uh, this question we asked, uh, do you believe that engaging in banter or humor can create a more inclusive environment during a uh, boardroom discussions? And almost 30%, uh, 36% of the people believe that yes, it fosters an inclusive and collaborative environment. And another 36% believe that yes, but to a certain extent. Again, we try to map this with one of those survey questions, uh, th those uh, scientifically uh, uh, proven questionnaire. And on that also we see those people who say, yes, it fosters an inclusive and collaborative atmosphere uh, uh, give, gave a higher rating than uh, the overall rating of, given by all the respondents. So again, uh, it's very hard to make this inference because the, we, are, uh, we have a very limited data set of 14 people. But definitely, this is something interesting that we can look into and after collecting some more data. right? So I know uh, this is a little bit boring, lots of mathematics. Let's talk about more concrete examples. So while doing our secondary research, we, we have gone through some papers. And uh, one of the papers talked about some real incident, how banter happened in a workplace. So uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to read just one of them, the first one. Staff reporting on their sales forecasts and actual achievements for the past week. Zach did not have a good sales week and spends some time giving the reasons for this. The CEO looks stern and concerned. He reiterates the sales number that Zach had forecast and the much lower number that was reached. Zach quips, oh well, I'm revising the next week forecast to zero sales. Everyone laughs and the meeting moves on to the next topic. This is one of those examples how banter can be helpful, uh, you know, friendly banter can be helpful in a workplace to diffuse a tense situation. Now, let us also hear an example given by one of our respondents. Uh, there was a meeting uh, and the chairperson uh, gave some task to a mm -hmm. person, to a, to a deserving person. Mm -hmm. But that person again uh, denies, uh, straight away denies uh, uh, that to, re to, 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 the, uh, to receive the task. <laughs> then it created a, um, um, some embarrassing situation in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Then uh, suddenly boss and chairperson uh, took it uh, in, uh, humorously and uh, just changed uh, the, his version. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 for, I have forgotten uh, that uh, task are never given, a challenging task are never given, uh, but uh, it is opted, rather it is opted, so mm -hmm. that uh, challenging jobs can, can, can be done in a better way. Then. Uh, 
then somebody stood and uh, raised and uh, raised his hand mm-hmm. uh, then uh, chairperson happily uh, uh, gave gave this job and uh, task to the person mm-hmm. who who had opted the rather is uh, it was it was very uh, very uh, unwanted so uh, uh, we can see uh, how a leader uses banter in a difficult situation where things could have been gone wrong and uses banter to achieve his outcome what is uh, or what his goal was his goal was to allocate uh, this complex task to a responsible person and it was achieved right so now to talk about takeaways i would like to call my team member apurva hi everyone good morning i am audible right yeah thank you so we heard what is banter we heard what is a boardroom banter and how it can make the workplace more inclusive uh, we showed examples of it how you can use it so there are what are takeaways from this all this conversation that we did so let's talk about the do's and don'ts in a boardroom banter why are we talking about this because we are the future business leaders right we are going to go back into our workplaces at a leadership position so we need to know what do we need to do and what we need to avoid one of the do's avoid deep personal topics don't breach into the domestic top uh, issues of your of the people who are with you avoid such topics you want to build relationships not break them tackle difficult issues by judging what and when to say you don't want to use the word no because it is a outright negative we have learned this in our safety discussions also uh, so you want to say it but in a subtly manner you want to know what is the subject matter that you are talking about you need to know what the agenda of the meeting is right intent of the banter is banter is very important this is something that we concluded based based on all the interviews that we had your intent matters the most right if you want to be negative if you are negative if you are provoking it's not going to the recipient is not going to accept it very well so be sure of the intent of your banter keep composure in difficult situations in uh, fierce meetings banter can be used as a very important tool to keep your engagement right but you don't um, so you want to keep your composure and proceed with the conversation at hand if you are part of a meeting where fierce discussions are going on how do we want to keep it sometimes you can use your authority this is not the place for this discussion let's go ahead we can take it up later so that is something like that keep your composure and let it go ahead don't in a boardroom batter don't impose um you want people uh, to you know listen to you out of respect not pressure so make sure to not impose your um, comments to other people or uh, add fuel to the fire don't add fuel to the fire one of the interviewees told us that there was somebody who held a grudge and was just going on and on with the discussion so in such instances don't pass unnecessarily uh, humorous or bantering comments and add fuel to the fire avoid lag pulling don't do any kind of sarcasm which the recipient will not be comfortable accepting um and continuous banter if you don't know the subject if you don't know your agenda don't try to uh, you know cover it up by using banter that's not the way to go because lastly to conclude this is some advice to the future business leaders that we thought of when you go back to your workplace find your place in the boardroom know your audience stick to the agenda of the meeting um there is also um the point where you need to be open and receptive to any kind of banter that comes to you right do unto others what you want others to do unto you um so is uh, that's why understand others incorporate their perspectives in your uh, discussions um it should be the placement of your banter is very important it should be near to the end or towards the beginning of the meeting banter can be very important when you want to pre align people to your ideas right one instance of it is um if you know somebody is not okay with your investment decisions and they you uh, realize that it's not going to be easy to um you know keep align them to your agenda start the meeting with okay i i feel that uh, nobody wants to do this investment i think we all agree to it so then uh, how do you do it 
somebody, uh, one of the interviews said, in such cases where the uh, chairperson started with, let's not do this, um, somebody said, no, no, we need to have this discussion. So in, you can use banter for this. Health of the board and engagement of the people decides the quality of the banter. So read the room, that's very important. Lastly, um, before ending our topic, I just want to leave you with a short clip of uh, one of the CEOs of Hindalco that we interviewed. And what he said, I think, is very um, well placed with all of us. Um, I knew, you know, uh, I think. Um, I knew, you know, uh, I think you guys may have a different challenge that, uh, you know, you may be doing this meetings in uh, not just amongst people, but uh, with, uh, you know, AI bots also maybe in the meeting. So I can't talk about how you handle the AI bots and others, but I think finally people in the room are people. And, uh, you know, we, we've evolved over centuries and millennia to understand and have the ability to understand people, uh, right? If you just use that ability uh, versus stay fixed on your agenda that you want, you know, you will figure it out what's the right way to go about in the meeting. The moment you keep it to your agenda, you know, it's difficult to sort this out because you will not see uh, what's happening in the room from the, from the other's perspective. That's it from us. Thank you so much. So this is just a short bibliography that we have noted of all the research papers and the surveys that we did. Thank you so much. Very well done.